Hello, in this video we're looking at issue 42 of Warhammer 40,000 Imperium magazine and the canon that comes with the issue so we can begin our Adeptus Sororitas collection. Hello, I'm Mike and this is Will. We are the Tabletop Donkeys. Hello. And we're bringing you issue 42 of Warhammer 40,000 Imperium magazine today. In this issue we got an Adeptus Sororitas Canoness. So uh, starting off another faction for our Imperium collection. And if you'd like to see her in action, you can use the time code in the description or the chapter bars. But we'll have a look through the issue first. So first up we have the uh, background for the Canoness. So these are form part of the leadership of the Adeptus Sororitas. And she's equipped with a power sword and a plasma pistol. She has a Rosarius, which is a sort of holy symbol and protective device. She also wears power armor, although the Adeptus Sororitas are not superhuman. They're just ordinary humans. And she has a rod of office as well, as befits her station as a commander. And then her battle record there, where you can name her equipment and uh, give her a name and track any details. And then background on the Adeptus Sororitas themselves, the all-female forces of the Imperial Church, formed after the Age of Apostasy, which we heard about in a previous issue. After that, the Ministorum was not allowed to have men under arms, so they kind of a loophole in that law by having women instead. So the Adeptus Sororitas were formed. Often the sisters are the orphans of former officers and nobility who don't have anywhere else to go and are taken in and uh, given rigorous uh, religious and tactical training. Over the page it shows the six main orders militant, although there are a numerous smaller orders militant. These are the six most important ones. And they are defined by their unflinching faith in the god emperor. And so the sister's faith drives them to great zeal and fury on the battlefield and uh, can even protect them from injury. And then background on the Sororitas command structure. The canoness we got in this issue is part of that. It mentions the abbess Morvenval, who is the sort of overall leader of all of the battle sisters. And then each order's militant has a canoness superior. And then smaller sisters forces are led by either a canoness or a palatine. There are several ranks of canoness. So you have the superior and then preceptor, canoness commander and so on. And then the palatine is a sort of a lieutenant. So they lead smaller forces. And then the Celestians are the elite veteran warriors of the battle sisters. You're often deployed as honor guards to officers or uh, are sent against the most dangerous foes, either equipped as regular battle sisters or with melee weapons. And then background for the Order of Armored Lady. This is the most numerous of the Order's militant, and also the ones uh, the magazine will be telling us how to paint them. It was originally called the Order of the Fiery Heart, but after the death of Saint Catherine, their original leader, it was renamed to the Order of Armored Lady. The sisters have a great sense of martyrdom, which sort of drives them to insane feats of bravery, dying gloriously in battle for the Emperor. And over on the next page, we have a background on Junith Urutia, who is the Canoness Superior. She goes into battle on the vast pulpit, fittingly equipped with flamers to burn the heretic. And here's a little short story about a Sister Superior fighting against the forces of chaos. Now we can finally get to our build guide for our Canoness. Probably we'll have to look out for her incense things that dangle on the front of her robe. There is potential to snap them there, but otherwise she's fairly simple to put together. Just not as chunky as a Space Marine. So there she is, fairly simple to put together. And then her painting guide. He's an order of our martyr lady, so it's mostly going to be black with some red and cream for the robes. Base coating some areas silver, so that you can then go over it in gold, just to makes the gold a little bit shinier. And don't forget, she's got a bionic leg as well. And you do need to take a little bit of time to do the gold trim on her robe, I suppose. But now we can learn her rules and get into our game. So before we can get into our game, of course, we have the data sheet for the Canoness, the first of our Sisters of Battle models. She has a 6-inch move, weapon skill and ballistic skill of 2+. plus. She's only strength and toughness 3, because she's not a genetically modified space marine. She has 5 wounds, 4 attacks, a leadership of 9, and a 3 plus save, thanks to her power armor. She has a plasma pistol, which is the same as the space marine captain's one, effectively. Power sword, which is not master crafted, so it only does 1 damage, but still strength plus 1, AP minus 3. She has fragment crack grenades, although their profiles are not given here. She has the Acts of Faith, Sacred Rites, and Shield of Faith rules, which are 
are all Adeptus Sororitas faction rules, so we'll learn about those in a future issue. A 4 plus invulnerable save, because of her Rosarius. And an aura called Lead the Righteous, which allows friendly Order of Our Martyred Lady core units, which is the Order of Sisters of Battle that we get with this magazine, within 6 inches to re-roll hit rolls of 1, much like the Space Marine Captain. But her Rod of Office allows us to pick one Order of Our Martyred Lady core or character unit within 12 inches in the command phase, and until the start of your next command phase, that unit can re-roll hit rolls of 1. So the same effect as the Aura, but uh, with a slightly different condition. And then she obviously has the usual keywords. And on the next page there's a tutorial for her Lady the Righteous Aura, and then one for the Rod of Office. So you can see here that this unit that it has been used on moves outside her Aura during the charge phase, but still gets to re-roll hit rolls of 1 because of the Rod of Office being used on them. Then we have the background for today's game. So in attacking the Shrine World of Electia, the Necrons have been despoiling Imperial Shrines and destroying relics, which obviously is an affront to the very pious Adeptus Sororitas. And so this Canoness has enlisted the help of her Space Marine allies to try and retake and reconsecrate one of these shrines, while the Necrons Royal Warden knows the value of these to the Imperial Defenders and is so, so trying to desecrate even more shrines. So we have our mission, Purify the Shrine. Uh, again, it says it's a scout mission, but the way the mission works shows that it's definitely supposed to be an initiate mission, so that's just a mistake. The forces will be the Necrons have the Royal Warden, 10 Necron Warriors and 5 Immortals, while the Imperium forces are our new Canoness with 5 Assault Intercessors and 3 Aggressors. The battlefield will be our new battle mat with the terrain set up as usual and a single objective marker for do doing an action in the centre of the board. There's an attacker and defender deployment zone but it does specify the Imperium is the attacker so they'll be on the left of the board here as you see it in this orientation. Each side has their own mission objective. So the Imperium has the Prayer of Cleansing, which is a progressive objective, scoring a victory point for completing the following action, which involves the Canoness performing the action at the end of her movement phase, if she's in range of the objective marker and there are no enemy units in range of that objective marker. Like in the last game, it doesn't say how long the action takes, so presumably that means it completes immediately and she's free to do other things later in the turn. Whereas the Necrons have to kill all humans. And it says at the end of the Defender's turn, they gain a victory point for every enemy unit destroyed and two victory points if they destroy the enemy Warlord. Uh, I suppose as written that means they wouldn't get a victory point if they destroyed something in the attacker's turn. That's probably unlikely anyway because that would only happen during melee combat but anyway that's what it says so that's how we'll play it. So that's all fairly straightforward. We'll get the board set up and the armies deployed and then start the game. So here's our battlefield. Obviously we've got the terrain in the usual places on this board from issue 38 and you can see a single objective in the centre which is the location where the cannoneer has to get to to do the action. We're looking at the Imperial attackers first. Yeah, we've got the intercessors and the aggressors basically forming a block around the Canoness. And they're deployed like that so that the building should shield them from the Necrons. Should be outside from most of the Necrons from there. And for the Necrons, we've just got the 10 Warriors, which have gone for the Gauss Reapers in this one to try and get through the tough aggressors. The Royal Warden in the middle at the back and then the Immortals out on the flank. And uh, obviously I don't get command protocols in this mission because my Warlord is not a noble. The Royal Warden does not have the noble keyword. Then it doesn't specify who goes first, so we'll be rolling off to see who gets the choice. I rolled one. I'm going to roll again. Oh, I win the roll off. So I guess I'll go first. So we'll be on to Imperium, turn one. Well, in my command phase, the Canoness will use her Rod of Office ability on herself and just assume she has that all the time. I'm not going to say it every turn. And then everyone in my movement phase, everyone advanced. The space rings are a bit slow, but they get enough so that the assault assistants can cluster into the building. The Canoness is in the corner in the back there and then the aggressors are hanging out around the corner, still out of sight of most of the Necrons. Uh, but obviously there won't be any shooting because the only assault weapons are miles out of range and the Canoness is not within range of the objective yet to do the action. So we'll be on to Necron's turn one. So nothing to do in my command phase, in the movement phase. Everybody's just moved up a tiny little bit. The warriors aren't in range to shoot anybody. I could have got in range, but it would have meant they got charged most likely. So the five immortals can see the assault intercessors, as can the Royal Warden. And Royal Warden will shoot first, because obviously he does two damage. He's not within 15 inches, so he just has the two shots hitting on threes. We both hit. They wound on threes. Oh, no, one and two. And seven shots from the Immortals, two of them are within 15 inches, hitting on threes as well. Six hits, wounding on threes. Four wounds. Four, four plus saves, because we've got cover. Made two, so that's one dead or something to say so. So I'll take away this guy. And then that'll be it for my turn, because the Necron Warriors aren't in range of anything to shoot at. So we're on to Imperium, turn two. 
So in my movement phase, the Cannon S has moved normally out, so she's in range of the objective now. The aggressors advance, so they can form a line in front of her. These two units are all within three of the pipes, so they get cover from it. And the Assault Intercessors have moved out normally as well, potentially try, at least try and charge the Immortals. And then at the end of the movement phase, the Cannon S will do the action. She'll begin consecrating that shrine. <laughs> it immediately finishes. Yeah, as far as we know, it finishes straight away, so that's one victory point to the Imperium. And we'll use the yellow dice there to mark victory points for the Imperium. And I'll start shooting with the Cairness. She's just going to put a plasma pistol shot into the Warriors. Not supercharging. So, one shot hitting on the two. It hits. Wounds on a three. It does wound and kills a Warrior. Yeah, I'll put that on someone who isn't getting cover. That'll lose this Warrior on the end. Does the Warrior reanimate on a five? No. Then I'll do the Aggressors who are going to put all of their Flamestorm Gauntlets into the Warriors as well. 66 shots, 21 hits, wounding on fours. That was 12 wounds. I'll put the wounds on the people in cover to start with, so I'll do them four at a time until they're all dead. So I'll have a three plus save against this. So they're all alive so far. Next four. That kills three of them, so there's only one left. So I do these one at a time on that one. Now it's dead. And then the remaining three are on people not in cover for four plus saves. Uh, and made one of those, so that is a total of six dead. So just the three remaining after that, but then we can re try and reanimate some of them. So coming back on fives, re-rolling ones. Three back, but no ones to re-roll. And I brought them back away from the Immortals, because if the Assault Intercessors manage to charge the Immortals, I don't want them piling into the Necron Warriors as well. Finally, the Assault Intercessors, they'll put all their pistols into the Warriors as well. Sarge isn't going to supercharge. So red dice will be the Plasma. These all hit on threes. Well, the plasma misses. Bolt pistols hit, wounding on fours, getting two. AP for minus one, heavy bolt pistols, so five plus. Failed both, just reanimate them now. Well, one comes back, reroll the one. Ah, okay, they both come back. Uh, the reanimation just allows them to basically just shuffle around a bit. Finally, in the charge phase, the assault intercessors will try and charge the immortals, needing a pretty decent roll, more than a three at least. And then in the morale phase, the Warriors, well, they've only lost four overall, so they wouldn't have to take a morale test anyway, but it's worth reminding that we do technically have Warlords in this game, so the Warlord trait aura of plus one leadership will give them leadership 11 at the moment anyway, from the Royal Warden. And then we'll be on to Necron's turn two. So in my movement phase, everybody's moved back. Could try and get close to the objective and stop the Imperium taking it entirely, but I think we're probably better off using our superior firepower at this point. So we've just got everybody towards the back of the board with the Royal Warden in the middle. And the shooting phase, the plan is to try and kill an aggressor and then shoot at the cannoness, because with only two models left, she won't have Lookout Sir anymore. So we'll start that off with the warriors firing at the aggressors. Twelve shots hitting on threes. Ooh, five hits. Wounding on fours, because aggressors are tough as five. Oh, okay, well at least they were wounded. Four plus save because we're in cover. Yeah, that's four damage. So this chap will die and then normal aggressor will take a wound, but that means no Lookout Sir for the cannoness. So that leaves the cannoness open to further fire, so we'll shoot with the Royal Warden at her to start with. So he's just within 15 of her, so he has four shots hitting on threes. Three hit. Wounding on threes. Uh, two wounds with an AP of minus two. Uh, four plus invulnerable save, need to make both. Made one, so she's down to three. So then the Immortals will have a go, only two of them within 15 inches of her though. So we've got seven shots hitting on threes. Four hits. Wounding on threes. Three wounds. Four plus invulnerable saves again. Made one. She's still alive on one wound. So the cannoness survives on one wound, but that's all my shooting. So that will be the end of my turn, because there's obviously no morale test necessary or anything. And we'll be on to Imperium turn three. So in my movement phase, the aggressors have started to move around the pipes, get near the warriors. The assault intercessors have moved around the other pipe in the foreground to get near the immortals. Well, the cannoness has actually moved back. She's still within three inches of the objective, but uh, realise that cover doesn't actually benefit her because she'll have a four plus A by the way. She's actually going to move back, so she's out of rapid fire range of all of the Necrons. Uh, at the end of my movement phase, the cannoness will perform the action. Going up to two victory points. So in my shooting phase, I'll start with the aggressors at the Immortals, because if I shoot the Warriors, it'll just make my charge really hard, so... 46 flamethrower shots, 17 hits, wounding on fives, getting three. Well, two models are just about close enough to the pipe to get cover from it, so there'll be a two plus save, so I'll do two. Now, I've made both of those, and the last wound also saved. Then I'll do the Assault Intercessors. Yeah, only the man in front is in range to throw a crack grenade, so I have a crack grenade from him, plasma pistol from the sergeant, and two bolt pistols. 
Uh, not supercharging the plasma. Black dice will be the crack grenade, all hitting on threes. Crack grenade hit, plasma hit, and one bolt pistol. Black dice and the red dice wound on threes, while the white dice wounds on a five. So just a plasma wound. Yeah, no cover, so a six to save. One minute. Uh, on to the charge phase. The assault intercessors will charge the immortals. Hopefully, yeah, seven's going to be enough. So they're going to charge like that, going to try and pen all the, the immortals in. And then the aggressors will charge the warriors. They get a seven, that's going to be enough as well. So they can get in as well. I'll start with the aggressors. This guy's going to pile in. I was hoping to pile him in around, but the, uh, it's just too much wall there. So he just has to go in. So seven attacks from the aggressors, hitting on fours. Getting three. Wounding on twos. Getting two. No save though. So I'll take away the ones at the back and then we'll try and reanimate on fives. re rolling that one in one success. Then the assault incisors get to go. Mm -hmm. so they'll pile in like that. 13 attacks hitting on threes. Nine hits. Wounding on fives. Getting two. Two four plus saves. Make both. So I'll pick the immortals to fight with first. 10 attacks from them hitting on threes. Five hits. Wounding on fours. Three wounds. Three plus saves. Made two. And just says it will take a wound. And then I'll put it on that guy on the end. And then the warriors can fight. These two Necron warriors closest to the camera will actually attack the assault intercessors because they're easier to injure. The other three have to attack the aggressors. So attacks on the assault intercessors hitting on threes. We've got one. Wounds on a four. That's not a wound. And on the aggressors, we've got three attacks on threes. They all hit. They wound on fives. We get one. Three plus. Made it. So that will be the end of the turn. I only lost one Necron Warrior this turn, so no more out as necessary. And we'll go on to Necron's turn three. In my command phase, I use adaptive strategy on the Immortals, which allows them to fall back and still shoot later. And then in the movement phase, the Immortals have fallen back and the Royal Warden has moved out of the way to give them some space. It looks like a bit of a mess, but the Warriors are still engaged with all of the Space Marines, whereas all the models at the back are not. Then in the shooting phase, the Royal Warden and the Immortals are all going to shoot the Cannonists, because the other two units are not viable targets. And I'll roll all of these at once because he's only got one wound left so the Royal Warden's extra damage won't matter. So seven shots from the six models, hitting on threes. Six hits, wounding on threes. Five wounds. Five four pluses. Oh, I made one. So there you go. The Cannoness is killed. And then that's a victory point for destroying a unit and an extra two for killing the Imperium Warlord, bringing the Necrons to three. But obviously the Imperium side can't get any more victory points now because the Cannoness is dead. So even if the Space Marines manage to wipe out all the remaining Necrons, it will actually be a Necron victory, regardless. So despite having the Necrons kind of pinned down, it is a Necron victory. And uh, we'll recap the game for you now. So that was a game from issue 42 of Warhammer 40,000 Imperium Magazine. How do you think that went? Probably, I think actually, to be honest, it was better than I thought it was going to go because what I sort of expected to happen was that you could uh, just jam all your warriors onto the objective and then <laughs> I'd never be able to do the action as long as you survive long enough. Yeah, I decided not to try and contest the objective because I didn't actually want to get anywhere near your melee units. Yeah, I mean, it's not, you only have to kill three assault intercessors and an aggressor and then you can just shoot the cannons to bits and she's not hard to wound at all, so. And I can't hide her and still get victory points. I suppose I could get one virtue point and then hide in a building. Yes, it did present me with a slight dilemma that I could either shoot the cannoness or your melee units that were going to tie me up. Um, although I did get victory points for killing all of your units, the cannon has obviously been worth three, and the fact that she's the only way you can get victory points. I probably got away with it, firing at her in my second turn and failing to kill her, but then the, you didn't do enough damage to my shooting units. Yeah, I think if I'd made that charge in the second turn, it might have gone a bit differently. Yes, that's probably true. It would have hemmed me in a lot more as well, and I would have struggled to bring guns to bear probably. That was my last chance though. Once you'd locked my yeah. units down in melee, I couldn't really have done very much. If the aggressors had killed a few more warriors as well, actually, if I'd been able to get into the rural warden as well. Yeah, even just consolidated into the rural warden, that would really stop him shooting. I probably did make some mistakes. Um, might have been better to keep the assault intercessors near the cannoness as well, because there's more bodies to defend the cannoness. Maybe stop them with the aggressors so the aggressors went off after the immortals. And I probably should have moved her towards the top of the board in the third turn so that when your immortals fell back, fewer of them could shoot her. But yeah, it, I guess we'll talk about the oddities of the mission itself in a minute, but in terms of what you're expected to accomplish in this, you don't really get to use the cannon Yeah, really. it's a pretty bad way to introduce a new unit. She is just mostly a spectator in this game. But then yeah, it was a bit peculiar because, at least as written, I only got victory points during my own turn if I killed units. So in the unlikely event you had like a space marine on one wound who I killed in my turn, then as written I wouldn't get a victory point for that. Yeah, I mean potentially all I'd need to do is get the cannon to do the action one 
once, supercharge her plasma pistol and hope she rolls a one and then you don't get any victory points for killing her. Yeah. Same for the intercessor sergeant as well, if he's the last man, then the game's at least a draw. I really don't think that's intended. It's, it should just be that you get a victory point for every unit you destroy. And once again, the action didn't have a defined finishing point, so we just had to assume it ended as soon as you did it. Well, I mean, considering how the cannon has only fired her pistol once, it could take the entire turn for all yeah. it mattered. Yeah, it made no practical difference, I suppose. But And the cannon in general, I mean, y- yes, she's not as tough as a Space Marine captain, but she is just a normal human in armour, I suppose. So once we get more sisters of battle units... Yeah, you know, pretty often to talk good. about her more when she's got some sisters to fight alongside. Yeah, we don't. I mean, for example, we don't have their army rules yet or anything. She's at the moment, she is just one model. Here. She's essentially the same as a Space Marine captain. Yeah. Use her in a similar way. And she doesn't have a mastercrafted power sword. I mean, she can reroll ones in melee as well, I suppose, but she's going to be wounding most of the Necron staff on fours rather than threes. If you want a cannoness to go into melee, you actually have to build for that. Normally, a cannoness has an option to get a blessed blade, which is on par with a Space Marine captain. Uh, whereas this one, I think, is intended to be more of a commander type stand in the back a bit like the tech priest dominus almost the rod of office i suppose is, is useful in itself you can use it on a unit and then send it off somewhere else rather than having to keep all your units nearby it's quite useful for melee units because there's always a danger with charging with melee units you end up outside of aura ranges whereas this fixes that as long as you plan ahead and use it on the correct unit then that's quite handy yeah it can be used on characters but there probably aren't that actually that many characters you would use it on normally i mean it does mean she can supercharge her plasma pistol much more safely than the captain can I do think she's a good model, though. Yeah, I, I really like the Battle Sister aesthetic. It's a very 40k aesthetic. Because quite often in sort of science fiction, religion's generally not touched upon. Whereas this is a very extreme religious order. And I quite like the fleur de lis iconography as well. And you mentioned as well that you like that it looks like she's older and more wizened. It's certainly fitting of a, a leader. Considering that these are zealous fanatics, I suppose. If you manage to make it to the rank of canoness. Yeah, and she is depicted with white hair, but that's usually the norm for Battle Sisters, certainly for the Order of Armata Lady at least. Yeah, we'll see that when we get the other ones, so painting choice is deliberate there I suppose. But otherwise I don't think we have a great deal more to say about this game or this issue. Let us know your thoughts on the game, if you've played it, let us know how you did and what your thoughts are on the slightly peculiar arrangements. Let us know your thoughts on the Canoness as well. We've been the Tabletop Donkeys and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Yeah.